um, tomorrow, and then tomorrow will be ending. Um, <clears throat> so the first day we talked about what is fasting. What is fasting? We said fasting is when um, uh, a person, a group of people, a country or a nation or the world um, decide to eliminate or, or reduce the intake of food to turn to God, um, to turn to God or return to God in repentance, um, in ashes and sackcloth. Um, so that's what we talked about. And we said fa fasting is, is a diet with, without prayer. If you, fa if you say you're fasting and you're not praying, you're not fasting, you're on a diet. So, so yes. So the second day we talked about, uh, the importance of fasting, the importance of fasting, you know, fasting is to get us closer to God. That's the purpose of fasting. Um, it, that's the purpose of fasting is to draw us nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to God, um, is to turn us to God by turn, by tuning our ears to God as well. Right. So it tunes our ears to God, um, so that we can hear God, we can hear his word, but we fast because we want to go to God about our concerns. We go, um, pe the people of God, they fast. And Jesus expects his followers to fast. He expects us to fast, uh, to fast about in everything and anything. In fact, there are some problems in your life, some difficulties and some demons that you want to cast out. If you don't fast, Jesus said, they will not come out. So we said there are three things that Jesus most definitely um, require of his, this, of his, of those who follow him, that they give. He says, when you give, not if you give, he, um, when you pray, when you pray, not if you pray, when you fast, not if you fast. But this morning, I would like to talk on the subject of the inherent danger in fasting, the inherent danger in fasting. Some of you might be shocked with the title, with this title. But there is an inherent danger in fasting. Uh, it's nothing unlike the danger that is found in the practice of other spiritual disciplines. It's nothing like that. It's nothing different. And when I say danger, I know some of you may be thinking about health-related issues. That's the least of our problem. The danger I'm talking about is the human tendency to take that which is sacred, and holy, that which is meant to draw us closer to God and turn it into a religious drill or a religious thrill. <clears throat> Let me say it again. The danger I'm talking about is the human tendency to take that which is sacred, holy, that which is meant to draw us closer to God and turn it into a religious drill or thrill. That which was intended to draw us to God now actually distances us from God because we have perverted it. Fasting must be to glorify God. <clears throat> Sorry. It must be to glorify God. Nothing else. Nothing more. Fasting must be to glorify God. God. It is not to have an emotional experience and not to attain personal happiness. It should not be turned, it should not be turned into a mere external practice without any internal passion for God. It cannot be reduced to a habit without the heart. It should not be turned into a public spectacle. It should not be about seeking a mountain experience. Jesus condemned the practice of fasting when it is done in such a way as to receive public adulation. I don't know if you remember in Luke chapter 18, verse 12, <clears throat> when the, when the, when, when the ph ph Pharisees and, and the tax collector 
came into the temple in Luke chapter 18, verse 12, where Jesus tells the story of the Pharisees who bragged to God. He's bragging to God in prayer that he fasted twice a week. Pharisees habitually fasted twice a week. They usually practice on the second and the third and the fifth days of the week. And these two days happened to be a major day for the Jewish market. That meant the city was packed. It was packed with vendors, with farmers, with merchants, with shoppers. Therefore, these days of public fasting would have to, they had large audiences. And these guys wanted to show that they were so great. In fact, people revered them. People revered them. That's the reason why Jesus was saying, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, it's because everybody was in awe at them. God only asked not to, God doesn't ask to fast all that time. They ask twice a week, fast every week, twice a week, all day, and during market, during the biggest market time. So everybody's looking at them and the public is just keeping them and putting them so high. We have those people in church and we elevate them because they're always showing you they are, they're great at fasting. They are the best at praying. And then you go to them as if they are like divinals, like they, like they are, like, like they are, um, like, hey, go, 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 go pray for me before God, for God. Go, go, go seek God for me as if they, own, they are the only one or they have a special chromosome, spiritual chromosome. No. The spiritual discipline, the spiritual gift is for all of us. Jesus says, um, Peter says, God says in the last day in the book of Joel, I will pour my spirit on all flesh, not some, and all. All these. The prayers I can do, they are... They, they are, it, it, it's at your fingertip. The sermons that I preach, they are at your, um, at your fingertip. God doesn't care about your ability. He cares about your availability. I tell you, if you make yourself available to God, he will do amazing things you, with you. This is a guy who grew up in church and every word he had to say, um, and I still say, um. And might have to take them out all the time before he puts the, 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 the sermons on. This is a guy who has an, uh, an accent. So if God can use me, he could use you. So what I'm saying to you is there is not a special spiritual chromosome in me or in anyone else. So what happened, we, sometimes we turn these people into Pharisees. And they in turn love the adulation and then they fall for it. And God is not pleased no longer. God no longer pleased. Yes, we should respect the leaders among us. God says, especially those who preaches and teaches and lead you in pastoral leadership. Yes, I do want the members of the church to, 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 to respect me. Yes. But I don't want anybody to put anyone in the church, including me, on a pedestal as if you can ever get there with God. Only these people can. No, you can. You can. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. So Jesus said, when this man was in front of God, in front of God, God, look at this, look at this tax collector. Oh, he's so bad. And I'm so good in front of you. When you come before the presence of God, you should be, you shrink like a midget. You should. Because whenever you truly, whoever truly see God sees themselves. And when they see themselves, they see, they see, they, they see a need for God's grace. So humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You're not all that. It's only God who wants to use you. And if you think you're all that, if people lift you up as if you're all that, guess what? God is not pleased. He does not hear your prayer. Your hundred days of fasting, guess what he said? He said, who asked for them? Did I ever ask you for fast? For those fasts? Those fasts doesn't even pass the ceiling. 
The past that passed the ceiling is a humble heart who is seeking intimacy with God. And Jesus says one more thing. He says, when you fast, don't do it like the, like, like the Pharisees, like the hypocrites. Don't do it like them. They already get what they deserve. But when you fast, go into your closet. Go before God. Seek his face. And you will receive God's reward, not man's reward. When you motivate, when, when your motive are right, when, when fasting is done properly, it is often the result of a renewed closeness with God and a greater sensitivity to the spiritual things. Let me say it again. When fasting is done properly, it is often the result of a renewed closeness with God and a greater sensitivity to the spiritual things. But when your motive, and when your motive are right, God will honor your seeking heart. And bless your time with him in every special way. You see, John Wesley spoke of fasting. This is what he said. First, when you fast, first, let it be done unto the Lord with our eyes singly fixed on him. Let our intention herein be this, and this alone, to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Let me repeat it again because it sounds so awesome. John Wesley says, when you fast, first, let it be done unto the Lord with our eyes singly fixed on him. Let our intention herein be this and this alone to glorify our Father which is in heaven. And if you do it that way, you will surely, you will surely receive God, receives God's blessing. So this is my prayer for you today and for me. That fasting, we should do it. We should do it, and it should. We should do it until it become a habit. But we should not do it to get adulation. We should not do it to get proclamation. We should not do it to get exclamation. We should only do it to glorify God, to draw closer to God, to turn. Or return to God. And God in return. Will see you in your closet place. And he will reward. What you do. God bless.